goes on, and the whole, the whole crazy story happened. It took many months. I met the woman a couple of days before the surgery. The surgery took place. And I have to tell you, this was the greatest experience of my life. And people often criticize me for that. When they say, what, what are you talking about? How could this be the greatest experience of your life? What about having your children? Now, I have to tell you, of course, it was great having my kids, but the initial desire to have a child is actually a selfish desire. I want a baby. See my baby? This was the most unbelievable, purest opportunity that the Almighty ever gave me to give, just to give. When I ask audiences all over the world, what's the greatest contribution the Jewish people gave to the world? What do they answer? Well, actually, in South Africa, somebody yelled out, Seinfeld. Okay, so... <laughs> But what is the greatest contribution the Jewish people gave to the world? Monotheism. The concept of one God. We're the one God people. What's so great about it? Do you ever wonder? Yeah, that's us. One-stop shopping. If this is the greatest contribution the Jewish people gave to the world, we should understand what's so great about it. In Greek mythology, God of love, God of commerce, God of weather. You got a weather problem, go the weather God. A love problem, go the love God. Specialized gods. What would be wrong with specialized gods? We have specialized lawyers today, specialized doctors. What would be wrong with specialized gods? Abraham stood up against the whole world and said, one, one must be a Jew. One, what's so great about it? When you have a God of love and God of commerce and God of weather, they, eat, they all have attributes, certain attributes and certain lacking. One God means he has it all, no lacking. What can you give to somebody who has it all? Nothing. That means he can't receive. That means he can only give. That means this whole world was created for us, for our pleasure. Don't make the mistake and think you're doing the commandments for God. Do you ever show up on a Saturday morning at a synagogue? And you walk in and you're thinking, God, here I am. <laughs> and there's not even a bar mitzvah, OK? <laughs> You're insulting God. You think God needs you to be in shul? You think God needs your prayers? You think God... He's got it all. He has no needs. My kids think they're cleaning their room for me. They're doing their homework for me. When my Moshi was a little boy, he wanted a cookie. I go, what do you say? He goes, please, thank you, excuse me. <laughs> Pick the word. You need to hear, Ima, and give me the cookie. I didn't teach Moshi to say those words for me. They're for Moshi. So he'll be a mensch. So he just won't be a taker. So he'll have more pleasure in this world and know there's a source to something. It's for Moshe. When I gave my kidney to this woman, it was the greatest experience of my life because then I felt close to God because it was being like God. It was giving just to give with no, with no expectations back. The Almighty can't receive. He can only give. He loves us. He loves us more than we love our children, more than our parents love us. He gives us these relationships to give us an inkling of what it means to love us. Be like God, be a giver. Thank you very much.